Chapter 48 And after these events it came to be that it was said to Yosef, See, your father is sick, and he took with him his two sons, Menashe and Ephraim. And Yaakov was told, See, your son Yosef is coming to you. And Israel strengthened himself and sat up on the bed. And Yaakov said to Yosef, El Shaddai appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and barak me, and said to me, See, I am making you bear fruit and shall increase you, and make of you an assembly of peoples, and give this land to your seed after you as an everlasting possession. And now your two sons, Ephraim and Menashe, who were born to you in the land of Mitzrayim, before I came to you in Mitzrayim, are mine. As Reuven and Shimon, they are mine. Your offspring, whom you shall bring forth after them, are yours. And let them be called by the name of their brothers in their inheritance. And I, when I came from Padan Arad, and I, when I came from Padan, Raquel died beside me in the land of Canaan, on the way, when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath. And I buried her there on the way to Ephrath, that is, Beth Lechem. And Israel saw Yosef's sons, and said, Who are these? And Yosef said to his father, They are my sons, whom Elohim has given me in this place. And he said, Please bring them to me, and let me barak them. And the eyes of Israel were dim with age, and he was unable to see. And he drew them near him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said to Yosef, I have not thought to see your face, but see, Elohim has also shown me your seed. So Yosef brought them from between his knees, and he bowed down with his face to the earth. And Yosef took them both, Ephraim with his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Menashe with his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near him. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head who was the younger, and his left hand on Menashe's head, consciously directing his hands, for Menashe was the firstborn. And he barak Yosef, and said to Elohim before whom my fathers Abraham and Yitzchak walk, the Elohim who has fed me all my life long to this day, the messenger who has redeemed me from all evil, barak the youth, and let my name be called upon them, and the name of my fathers, Avraham and Yitzchak, and let them increase to a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Yosef saw that his father laid his right hand on the head of Ephraim, it was evil in his eyes, and he took hold of his father's hand to remove it from the head of Ephraim to the head of Menashe. And Yosef said to his father, not so, my father, for this one is the firstborn, by your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He also becomes a people, and he also is great. And yet his younger brother is greater than he, and his seed is to become the completeness of the nations. And he barak them on that day, saying, In you, Israel shall barak, saying, Elohim make you as Ephraim and as Menashe. Thus he put Ephraim before Menashe. And Israel said to Yosef, See, I am dying, but Elohim shall be with you and bring you back to the land of your fathers. And I, I have given to you one portion above your brothers, which I took from the hand of the Amorite, with my sword and with my bow. Chapter 49
chapter 49. And Yaakov called his sons and said, Gather together so that I declare to you what is to befall you in the last days. Gather together and hear your sons of Yaakov and listen to Israel, your father. Reuven, you are my firstborn, my power, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of exaltation and the excellency of power. Unstable as the waters, you do not excel, because you went up to your father's bed, then you defile it. He went up to my couch. Shimon and Levi are brothers. Their weapons are implements of violence. Let me being not enter their council. Let my esteem not be united to the assembly, because they slew a man in their displeasure and the lamb and ox in pleasure. Curse be their displeasure, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I divide them in Yaakov, and scatter them in Israel. You, Yehuda, your brothers praise you. Your hand is on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children bow down before you. Yehuda is a lion's cup. From the prey you have gone up, my son. He bowed down, he crouched like a lion, and like a lion he roses him. The scepter shall not turn aside from Yehuda, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes, and to him is the obedience of peoples. Binding his donkey to the vine, and his donkey's Called to the choice vine, he washed his garments in wine and his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes are darker than wine and his teeth whiter than milk. Zebulun dwells at the seashore. He is a heaven for ships and his border is unto Sidon. Yisaska is a strong donkey lying down between two burdens and he saw that a resting place was good and that the land was pleasant and he inclined his shoulder to bear a burden and became a subject to slave labor then rightly rules his people as one of the tribes of Israel then is a serpent by the way and adder by the path that bites the horse's heels so that its rider falls backward. I have waited for your deliverance, O Yahuwah. Gad, a riding, a riding band raids him, but he raids its heel. Bread from Asher is rich, and he gives delicacies of a sovereign. Naphtali is a deer let loose. He gives words of elegant allegiance. Yosef is an offshoot of a fruit-bearing tree, an offshoot of a fruit-bearing tree by a fountain. His branches run over a wall. And the archers have bitterly grieved him, shoot, shot at him and hated him. But his bow remained in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty one of Yaakov. From there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. From the El of your father who helps you, and by El Shaddai who barak you with Birakoth of the Shamayim above. Birakoth of the deep that lies beneath. Birakoth of the breast and of the womb. The Birakoth of your father have excelled the Birakoth of my ancestors. Up to the limit of the everlasting hills, they are on the head of Yosef and on the crown of the head of him who was separated from his brothers. Binyamin is a wolf that tears. In the morning he eats prey and at night he divides 
the spoil. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is what their father spoke to them. And he barak them, he barak each one according to his own barakah. And he commanded them and said to them, I am to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron, the Kittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field of Ephron, the Kittite, as a possession for a burial site. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Yitzchak and Rivka, his wife. And there I buried Leah. The field purchased and the cave which is in it from the sons of Keth. And when Yaakov ended commanding his sons, he drew his feet up into the bed and breathed his last and was gathered to his people. Chapter 50 And Yosef fell on his father's face and wept over him and kissed him. And Yosef commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel. And forty days were completed for him, for so are completed the days of embalming. And the Mitzrites wept for him seventy days. And when the days of weeping for him were past, Yosef spoke to the household of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found favor in your eyes, please speak in the hearing of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me swear, saying, See, I am dying. Bury me in my grave, which I dug for myself in the land of Canaan. And now, please let me go up and bury my father and return. And Pharaoh said, Go up and bury your father, as he made you swear. And Yosef went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Mitzrayim. And all the house of Yosef, and his brothers, and his father's house, only their little ones, and their flocks, and their herds, they are left in the land of Goshen. And they went up with him both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very great company. And they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond the Yarden, and they lamented there with a great and very heavy lamentation. And he observed seven days of mourning for his father. And when the inhabitants of the land, the, Ca the Canaanites, saw the mourning at the threshing floor of Atad, they said, This is a grievous mourning for the Mitzrites. That is why its name was called Avel Mitzrayim, which is beyond the Yarden. And his sons did to him as he had commanded them. For his sons brought him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah before Mamre, which Abraham bought with the field from Ephron the Kittite as property for a burial site. And after he had buried his father, Yosef returned to Mitzrayim, he and his brothers and all who went up with him to bury his father. And when Yosef's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Yosef hates us and pays us back all the evil which we did to him? And they sent word to Yosef, saying, Before your father died, he commanded, saying, This is what you are to say to Yosef. I beg you, please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. And now, Please forgive the transgression of the servants of the Elohim of your father. And Yosef wept when they spoke to him. And his brothers also went 
and fell down before his face, and they said, See, we are your servants. And Yosef said to them, Do not fear, for I am, for am I in the place of Elohim? And you, you intended evil against me, but Elohim intended it for good, in order to do it as it is this day, to keep a great many people alive. And now, do not fear, I provide for you and your little ones. So he comfort, comforted them and spoke kindly to them. And Yosef dwelt in Mitzrayim, he and his father's household. And Yosef lived 110 years. And Yosef saw Ephraim's children to the third generation. The children of Makir, son of Menashe, were also brought up on Yosef's knees. And Yosef said to his brothers, I am dying, but Elohim shall certainly visit you and bring you out of this land to the land of which he swore to Abraham, to Yitzchak, and to Yaakov. And Yosef made the children of Israel swear, saying, Elohim shall certainly visit you, and you shall bring up my bones from here. And Yosef died, being one hundred and ten years old. And they embalmed him, and he was placed in a coffin, in a cof and he was placed in a coffin in Mitzrayim.